Hi, welcome to TLC's Creative Art Corner. I'm Miss Susan and I hope you had a blessed week. Today we are going to learn how to draw an object on a 2D surface to make it look 3D. The object that we're going to do can either be realistic or can be abstract. Now here are some examples of what this is. This is called optical art. Now this first one, if you look at it, it's parallel lines that are, you know, made into boxes with a circle in the middle. And the way the lines are curved, convex, and concave in the middle of it, it gives the illusion, you know, of movement or of shape. So, and these are done black and white, black and white, black and white, you know, so very popular. Always, this was the very popular way to do it. Okay. The second one we're going to look at, this gives the illusion of depth going down into a pit. And it's just, you know, a square and then pretty much parallel lines that are follow the square and then they're shaded in various shades of black. Okay. And then this third one is done with contrasting colors and wavy lines. And you can see with the shading in the middle, it's lighter in the center and then it gets darker at the sides and then the concave and the con convex and the concave curves gives this whole thing movement and the illusion of depth and stuff. This last one is done with contrasting colors and they're alternating curved lines. You can see they're convex and a concave, a convex and a concave. And then they're alternating colors with white as well as a contrasting color. And then it's all, then there's these parallel lines, well not parallel lines, but the radiating lines from the center that go out. And all of this helps to create the illusion of movement and depth. And these are all characteristics of optical art. Now today we are going to try to make our hand rest on the paper. Now you can also try a circle or a box and here's an example. Here's a box that's done. This is just done with pencil. So that's one way you can do it and just do it with shading. And we'll get into shading in another lesson. And here's another one that is done with just colored pencil. As you can see there's two intersecting circles and then they're just alternating colors of red and green, which are complementary colors. Yeah, and then it's opposite here. Okay. Sometimes you can just go all the way straight through, and sometimes you can do it opposite, you know, or uh, alternative, alternate me. And you don't have to use two colors. You can just do red and white, red and white, black and white, black and white, gray and white, whatever. So it's the choice would be yours. So what materials are we going to need today? Well, the first thing we're going to do is protect our surface. This is not a messy project, so we don't need to wear an apron. You're going to need sketch paper or copy paper, A4 is fine. And you can also use a smaller sheet because this can get tedious after a while. You're going to need to have a ruler. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need some markers. You can have Sharpies or you can just use black markers or colored markers if you want. You could use crayons or you could use colored pencils. Okay, so hit pause, go get your materials, Come on back and meet me here and we'll start the project together. Welcome back. Now the first thing we're going to do is trace our hand. So we're going to set our hand down, spread our fingers, okay, and decide where you want it on the, the paper. And then we're just going to start at the edge and just trace around. Okay, so there's my hand. Now once you've got your hand down, you're going to take your ruler if you want or you can do these freehand. For example, I might want to do the same, same width all the way across and I would start, I'm not going to put a line where my hand is. I'm going to leave this free for right now and I'm just going to put the lines across. Okay, so I don't have one there. And I'm going to follow a certain line on this. Another way to get a, a, a thing of depth or the, a feeling of depth is to have wider lines to skinnier lines and then come back out and you'll get this wavy effect as well. Okay, now for the rest of this I'm just going to do it freehand. And that lines don't need to be exactly parallel. You can, you know, you can put some movement in them and it's, it's perfectly fine. Okay, and you can have some closer together, farther away than others. Okay. So you just continue this process. Okay. 
until you're finished. So you go all the way up. And up here by the fingers, you're gonna, um, that one sort of doesn't go through there yet, so there, and then this one. Skip the hand, I'm gonna go through the thumb, and then here. So that's what you're gonna do all the way up the page. Okay. So you just continue that process until you have this. Now when you've got all your lines across, the next thing you're gonna do, now I did these lines earlier with um, a, a fine point Sharpie, but you can use a pencil, it doesn't matter, not important. Now I'm going to go from point to point where the lines intersect, and I'm going to do a curve. Now the more angled I can get this, the more depth or the more dimension the hand will have. Now the more curve I get, the more angled it, that I have the, this curved line coming from here, the more depth I will have or the more shape I will have to the arm and the hand. Okay. So I will try to come up. And you can make this as high as you want. And then, I, although I don't have another line down here, I know there would be one, so because the curve would come up. So I'm going to do that, okay? And then even further down there might be another one, so I'm going to do that. And then. Once you reach this point, you're going to take your black marker, or if you don't want to use black, you can use any color that you want, or you can use crayons if you want, or you can use colored pencils if you want. It's up to you, but I'm going to use a black and white marker because I'm going to do mine a little bit more traditional. So then you would just take your marker and then start at the bottom. I'm going to start here and color it in. And then I'm going to do the next one, come up, and just all the way across. So I would go line by line. And you'll have this. So here's our completed piece. And then what I did at the end, I went and took my fine point Sharpie and I traced, I outlined the hand. Okay, just to give it, so I could see where it was. Sometimes you don't need to do this, it's up to you, but I like to, I wanted to give it, I knew where the hand was. So I had gone all the way over and I traced it. Because I didn't want to lose this particular area here where it would have just been a pencil, so I wanted to see that I do have a finger there, and I do have color there. So, anyway, so here is my finished piece. So it pretty much does look like it's resting on the paper. It probably gives you, get, you, you might get a little dizzy looking at it after a while, but there you have it. As I said earlier, you could experiment, instead of just doing your hand or not doing your hand, you can experiment doing the um, different geometric shapes, diamonds or circles, you know, and having several together and trying things. And you can use just parallel lines and every other one. And yeah, there's, when you go, if you go online and look up coloring pages, optical art, you'll get a gazillion to do, a gazillion that you can look at. So that's that, you know, so those are an option too. So I hope you enjoyed making optical art. I encourage you to try other shapes besides your hand. I had a lot of fun exploring these different shapes and I really want to do more. Also when you're coloring your piece, you can see how the different colors and the shading effects can give it depth and shape just using different colors. 
So I look forward to seeing your optical art, so please send your masterpieces to the address on the screen and we'll post them on our website. So let's hear your ideas. Please send in your comments and suggestions. So until next time, be safe, stay healthy, and be a blessing to others. Bye-bye.